Hey guys, I'm Emily Powers, and today I'm going to show you how to paint this um, sunset lake uh, landscape. Um, it should be really fun, and I, it's all in, in acrylics today. Um, I'm going to show you step by step how to do it so that you won't miss anything. And this is the um, practice painting that I did already and I think it turned out pretty good but just warning you right now there's a lot of ugly stages in it so I mean it looks really really bad at first so you just kind of have to just keep going so this is the um, reference photo I have I got it off of a royalty free website I think it was Pixabay um, so I have the rights to use it so if you're going to use a photo um, for you know any business type thing you want to make sure that the pictures are royalty free. Um, the paint colors I'm using are titanium white, uh, deep magenta, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, burnt sienna, and this is um, glazing liquid. And I'm also going to use um, mixing white. I just didn't put it out yet because it's going to be like the last step of the painting pretty much for the sun rays. Um, you could use the, um, these two titanium white and glazing me medium mixed together. Um, it's just really easier with a transparent white so that you don't have to find the perfect balance because you don't want too much of that white. You don't want too much of the glazing liquid so having a transparent white kind of makes it a le little easier. Um, the brushes I'm using, I'm going to use two filberts. One's a half an inch and the other's a three eighths inch filbert. And then I'm, I use two um, rose blenders, a three eighths inch and a one fourth inch, but I may only need one. I think I might use the three eighths inch. Um, I ended up using two because I used one and then it got dirty and I couldn't do the white with it again so I had to switch to the other one but unless we make that mistake again we won't have to do that um, and then I'm going to use um, like a round brush for the rocks mainly and maybe some of the water and then a 1 4th inch um, Deerfoot stippler you could use like a small mop brush but my mop brush the one that I have is a half an inch so it would be way too big so I'm going to use this kind of in the same way. I mean, it, I would prefer the mop brush, but it's it'll, it works pretty good. So, um, I'm going to take my spray bottle and spray my paint so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to use a watercolor pencil. And what I did here is I just drew the um, horizon line. So it's kind of... Um, from the middle, it's just, just like a half an inch down or something like that. It's just right below the middle. And this is a 9 by 12 inch um, Phoenix canvas panel. I think I forgot to mention that. Um, so, if you mark it into thirds now, the, let's see, the edge of this little place where trees are coming out, is coming off right about there and kind of comes down so it's a little over from the third just a little bit and then the rocks are kind of you split it in thirds they kind of come they end right before you get to that third right there and they're going to kind of slant all the way to like in here and then it's going to go around and right about in here it's going to kind of that little spot's going to stop and then this is kind of it's almost like another set of trees that kind of comes out just slightly from that horizon point just barely like that and I'm the trees are kind of you know in here 
but I'm not going to draw any more than that. So I'm going to get my one half, half inch um, filbert and start with the white. And I'm going to put it right where the sun is, so like right in here. So if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and um, subscribe to my channel. I have other painting tutorials um, for beginners or for those who maybe have been painting a little longer. This is definitely going to be one of the harder ones. Um, so like intermediate to advanced. So I wouldn't really suggest this for like a first time painting. Okay, and then I'm adding a little bit of the yellow with it, but it's still very light. And there's like a spot in here that it kind of divides. So we're going to keep some of that white in there. So there's kind of like two patches of white color, but the, the main part is right here. And this is just the first layer. So it's going to, this, this first layer is going to be pretty ugly. So just remember that. Don't get discouraged if you're thinking this is like not working because it will work. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So now this is a little bit more yellow and I'm going... under that yellow we just did. And if you do end up painting this, you can share it with me on my Facebook group, Powers Paint and Post. Um, that group is specifically designed to, or specifically for, um, posting paintings you've done from my tutorials. And I'm also thinking that I'm going to have some polls on there for future YouTube videos that you can participate in. I'm, I'm not going to do it for April though because I have, I have that all ready. Okay, and then there's some yellow pretty much all back here. And then it kind of stops right about in here and then turns more like a lighter color. Okay, and then I'm gonna just get like a touch of phthalo blue. It's gonna turn out a little green. And maybe a touch of the pink, the deep magenta. Maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna. So it's like a light orangey green to put that in here. You may think it's kind of weird to put green in the sky, which it is. You don't really, most of the time you want to avoid making green in the sky, but in this case, there is green in there. And then I'm going to kind of wipe my brush off. You could, uh, you could uh, rinse it if you need to, but I don't think I need to. Okay, and then I'm going to get some phthalo blue with it. And that should be good, just like a light blue. And put it in here. There's some blue poking through the clouds. We want to show that. And this can be hard, especially when you have blue poking through the clouds and the clouds around it are yellow. It can make it hard to not make everything around it green. Um, but the nice thing is, is that around it is kind of like a greenish yellow, orangey. So green, it's got some green in it. So if you make it green, it's not going to be a big deal. I'm just trying to cover up 
my canvas because these layers we're doing now, we're going to cover over anyway. So if we do make green, we're, the next layer we should be able to cover it up better. Just kind of gently trying to blend that out. You don't want to get this blue way over here into your sun. Okay, and then there's some brighter yellow, but I'm mixing it in this green petal. Put it in here. And I'm getting some water so it'll flow better. You see it's getting green. Okay, so now I'm going to get some orange with it. Maybe a little bit of pink. And burnt sienna. With the white. Making like a peach color. And then I'm going to get some yellow and add it to that over here. So I'm going to get that and kind of blend those two together. As you can see it's kind of making green there. I'm not going to worry too much about it because it's the first layer and we're going to go over it. We just got to get something down in this first layer. Okay, and then I'm going to add some more pink to this, and some white, and there's like this pink, peachy color right in here. orange with it and kind of blend that in over here. And I'm going to rinse my brush out real quick and put some white over here. So it's kind of dry already, but I'm going to So I'm just going to put that yellow down and then just to kind of re-wet that spot and then I'm going to get some white and blend it with that try not to get any other colors in here at the moment okay and then back to this spot, we're going to take some of that blue and mix it with this orange. Get some white. This is very green, but it's light, so put some of that in here. to rinse my brush off again and take this white put some right above here because there's like some white peeking through just try not to get that green in there and then you can go and blend with it so there's going to be some white poking through there so I'm going to put that white first and then I'll kind of put some green above it. And then I add some purple to this uh, peachy mixture that was up there. Get some burnt sienna to dull it. I'm going to start putting that in. some white for this part over here and I'm going to get 
get some ultramarine blue. And put that on top of this. Got some orange just to kind of blend that back up into it. And then I'm rinsing my brush out again. Now you can see how ugly this is. I mean, it is very, very, like, really ugly. But don't worry, it's, it's just in the ugly stage. Most paintings have it, just some have it a lot worse than others, so. I'm gonna put some yellow up in here. Kind of blend it. It's like a yellow glow from the sun. And then get this pinky purple mixture Kind of blend that in. And I'm going to get this blue that we had earlier. Get a little bit of both blues. Let's kind of make a medium blue. And then some white. And get some water. And it's going to be darker than here, just a little bit. Put that up in here. I'm gonna wipe my wiping my brush off when I get to this part where I need to blend it. I'm rinsing my brush to get most of that blue off. And I'm gonna get a little bit of the white. a little bit more of that and just make sure that it's all in there good and all up in here is pretty blue so get a little more of that ultramarine because it's more of a purpley blue But I do want some of the phthalo blue in it. And just cover that sky. Okay, so you can see, I know we're close to done with that. It's so funny how some paintings, it's like, depending on what colors and things they have in it, sometimes you can do it just one or two times and then Others you need several, several layers to get it to even start to look good. Okay, so now I'm going to do kind of similar what I did with the sky in the water. So I'm getting the white and the cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to put it right there where the glow, the yellow glow would be. And don't worry if it blends a little orange into it from the pencil because there's gonna be trees there, so it's gonna kinda of cover that up. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of orange and Put that right here. There's trees here too, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh oh, something's in my paint. And then a little more there. 
can't get it too far in the yellow though. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit of pink in there with the yellow. It's going to make like a peachy color. And I'm going to put that down in here. And there's good there's a little more pink in right in here. And there's some pink pockets in here. Okay. to get the burnt sienna and purple dioxazine purple and some phthalo blue and put that in here so it's really dark Get some orange with it. And I'm going to take the, the dark and kind of pull in to the color we have right here. Tell like right about here because there's reflection from the trees and things and it kind of makes this down motion. All the rest of the water is going to be sideways. And I'm going to take some of this, let's see, it was phthalo blue and yellow with white. And I want more of the blue to make it like a teal. And put, in, put that right in here. And get this pink. Hmm. Trying to figure out what that transition is. It's got some pink and with the yellow and some white. And then there's some of this dark color with some white. And here, in, the, in between these pockets of peach. take some orange and put it in there and then we get some pink and yellow again and just finish filling in this corner I always have to remember to speak up when I'm doing the videos because I need 
the sound to reach up to the the mic and it's kind of hard when I'm concentrating and figuring out what colors I'm going to use and at the same time I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I had to get up kind of early. So I got the dioxazine purple mixed with whatever this was in here. I forget. I think like some peachy and some burnt sienna. And then I'm going to get some burnt sienna with it. And a little bit of ultramarine blue. So it's making like a really dark purple. And I'm going to put that in. You can add some of the glazing liquid if you want to, to help it flow. And you can, if you don't have glazing liquid, you can use water whenever I'm using it. You just don't want to use too much water. Like, I might use a lot of glazing liquid at one point, but you wouldn't want to use that much water necessarily, because if you use too much water, it can thin everything out too much. So. I'm going to get some yellow and white and come in here and kind of make some horizon strokes and kind of change what this looks like up here. Okay, and then there's some orange and yellow and pink, so like an orangey pink mixture. And it's coming off right in here. And then the purple goes around it. There's just small pockets, but I wanted to. Make sure I got it in there. You could you could just do purple on here and then do the orange later, but if you add a lot of white to it, but I'm gonna try to do this in less steps. Or not less steps, but try to any parts that I could have done before last time I'm gonna try to do before. And just kind of go into the yellow. Just, just far enough, just as far as you need to. Don't go too far with the dark because then you won't be able to cover it back up. But there are these pockets of of dark in here. And there's some like in here that's orange. So I'm going to avoid that right there. And then there's some right in here. That's orange. I'm, I'm going to go over it a little bit because it is water, so it's not going to be like totally avoided. There's just going to be some poking through it. I'm going to put some in there. And then I'm going to take purple, more purple, and put it on this island. You might think purple is a weird color to use, but it's 
kind of the darkest color here. So when you use this purple straight, it can turn almost black. Um, which this isn't really straight because it's got I've got other colors in my brush, but I want to define where those meet and so that I won't have to figure out where it goes later. And then I'm going to put this purple on this bank here too. And I might use some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna here. So this is all going to be rocks in here. So you can kind of make the edge of this kind of rough and bumpy. Put some rocks out there. They're kind of poking out some. Okay, so that's our first layer. And the sun is dry now. Or this whole air this whole sky is dry now, so we're going to move on to the next part. I'm rinsing this brush out real good because that's the only part that I need it for is the basic filling in step. Okay, so now I'm taking my 3 8 inch filbert. Um, and I'm going to get some white. And do this sun again. I don't know what it is today. I'm getting all these hairs and little pieces of dust and things in my paint. I don't know why. That seems to always happen when I'm filming. It doesn't happen very often when I'm doing it just by myself. But when I film... There's going to be a hair at some point, most most likely. It's so weird. Okay, and then I'm putting that yellow in between there. And this um, white that's at the bottom is going to be a little bigger of a patch of white than the uh, other one up here is. And I'm gonna rinse my brush out and take that white again and go back over. Okay, and then I'm getting a little more yellow going around it. Probably one of the easiest parts here in the sky is putting the yellow around this white. That's probably the easiest part right there. All the other parts are kind of harder. And I'm putting this yellow up here. And drag this into this over here. And I'm going to Take a little bit of the blue again and some burnt sienna. And so it's like a sage green, like a light sage green. And then I'm adding more yellow to it. So this 
doesn't have as much green in it. And, but it does have a little bit, so I'm gonna brush it in. And then I'm gonna get some orange, orangey green here. Mainly orange and yellow, but we do want the uh, green will just dull it a little bit. That's two orange, so getting more yellow. And there's like this part that comes into the sun just a little bit. can add some white to the yellow and kind of soften up the bottom of that a little bit. And then this is going to come down over this. start getting into this but I'm not gonna go too far into that right now then I'm getting this green color putting more of it in here I'm getting the glazing liquid and the glazing liquid will give me a little more dry time So it'll be wet for a little longer, help me to blend it more. And then I'm getting the yellow for this corner here. And then I'm going to get some yellow and white and start putting in more white than that. I need it to cover over better and put in some these cloud pockets that come and it's okay if it's kind of green at the moment we'll go over it with more layers later Just trying to get the shape right now and it's not going to be really a yellow color in here it's going to be a little bit of a different color but and it comes down here And these two blend right in here, it kind of comes out as a really light color. I'm going to get my uh, brush and clean it out real quick. Get that color out and Push that back. Got a little too much of that. And then I'm gonna get the blue, the phthalo blue and the white, which is what we made here in light uh, cover that up I 
actually a lot lighter. So I'm going to add white to it. It's lighter the closer it is to the sun, so putting in some white and kind of dragging it out through this blue. This is probably the hardest one I've done on YouTube and it took me about two hours and 40 minutes. So it's gonna be a while. I mean, it could be that because I did it once already, I kinda know what I'll need to do and so it won't take as long, but Okay, and then I'm going to get the white. And I'm going to put some of it into the blue. I'm going to get some, just a touch of orange and yellow with a lot of white and glazing liquid and There's like a spot that comes in, goes into the blue, but I don't want that blue, so I'm going to kind of brush it out. I'm getting yellow, orange, and white, but it's mainly white at the moment. And then I'm getting the yellow with the white, trying to blend it, and then more white. I'm going to blend it out. And then I'm going to get the RNG mixture I had for this little thing here. And I'm going to go over where this is supposed to stop. And I'm going to get some white with just a touch of yellow. Just a little, little, little bitty bit. And there's some, you know, it's still wet, so it's not gonna let me do that. There's like some really light yellowy clouds in there. Okay, so I'm gonna take this color yellow and a lot more white and 
I'm going to spray my canvas again because it's getting dry. My palette, not canvas. This is the canvas. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put this over here and it's, you now you can see it's covering better this time. And then I'm going to put in the the uh, and you're going to want to do this when the blue is dry. And actually, there's like really light clouds back in here. So you put the white clouds in and then I'm putting the white and yellow over this. And there's going to be some, it's really got some orange in it. Sorry about that noise. My dog is drinking water and she's being very noisy over there. And I'm getting more yellow. Okay, so this is really the color that's going to be in here. And put some small clouds and some big ones. I mean, they're all relatively small in this area, but some bigger ones and some smaller ones. And I'm getting more white in any area that I can still see blue poking through. I'm going to put this color all back in here and put that on these clouds right here. Mm. It may be dry enough to do the light clouds now. Okay, so I'm going to get the white and just a touch of yellow and put some clouds in here. There's some above and below. And a little bit in here, maybe. And there's going to be some in here. I'm getting more white right there. And I'll get this these yellows and oranges kind of put color in there. It's like it's wanting to lift. I don't know why because it, maybe it was still wet there. I'm going to get some white and yellow and put it in right in here. Okay, and then on this side, 
there's some orange and pink. And then I'm going to get some yellow and mix it with that. And get that white. Put it in there. And I'm going to get some of this with burnt sienna and yellow. So it makes a darker color. And then I could put some clouds in here. Just kind of by going back and forth lightly. And put some of that in here. Okay, and I'm going to get this white and try to cover that up more. It's really annoying to see that. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, I guess it's because I don't do many landscapes. The reason I did the practice today, it's like I kind of decided I'm not going to do the practice anymore unless I kind of feel like I would be, it would be better to if I'm kind of not sure how I'm going to do it, then I would probably still do a practice, but besides that, I'm kind of not going to do a practice anymore, and I, but I had to with this one because it, it made me nervous, so I was like, it, I don't know, I just don't do very many things where it's got pretty much every color in the rainbow. This it really is like every color in the rainbow that it's got in here. And I don't do a whole lot of paintings that have this many colors in them. That, you know, there's so many colors that can make mud. And it is, it's got some muddy colors in it just naturally. Which kind of, I think, makes it a little easier in that way. We just don't want green right here. <laughs> I mean, except for under there and above it. But certain places you don't want the green. So I make this made this like pink with the pink and burnt sienna and purple. And it's got these other colors in it too. And put in that right in here. And there's a lighter color, like a lighter pinky peach color right in here. I'm going to keep that in there, and then I'm going to get this green and lighten it up. And get some burnt sienna with it. Okay, that might be good. Yeah, that's good. So then there's like a green above here. And it's kind of got... It's not going to be a straight edge, so kind of change the shape of that. And then there's some coming in here. I'm just indicating clouds and trying to make the brush strokes unusual and different. I need some more yellow now. It seems like with this paint I kept having to put out more paint like over and over and over again. Okay, so then I'm getting yellow with it. 
and white because it's getting closer to the sun so it's changing colors and blending that in with it and putting some down here then I'm going to lighten it up a lot more get some of the glazing liquid with it and see how that goes it doesn't have much of the green anymore it's just a little bit I'm gonna get some yellow and orange and I'm want it really light so I'm going to put it over here because I ran out of room over that side and I'm going to put it right here where it's very light and get some more white just to Blend it out. And right around here is kind of where the pockets of light shine through. So I'm going to keep some of that white in there. And I'm going to get that green that we had and add some pink to it. And use it and kind of blend up into here. And then I'm going to get a little bit of purple. In the wrong spot there. <laughs> Get a little bit of purple with it and I may kind of make a new spot so that it's a little darker and doesn't have as much white in it. might be pretty good. Let's put some of that in. And then I'm going to get some white and purple. all in here is going to be really uh, light and I'm rinsing my brush out and getting more white because I want this to stay pretty light up in here And if we cover over that white, we can put the pockets back in. Okay, so next I'm going to take some purple with this and put it in here. Why it's so watery? I guess I had that in my brush. So I'm gonna get the purple and burnt sienna and put some of that in here. If it's dry, you can take the glazing medium. 
to uh, blend it in. Okay, so next I'm going to take some ultramarine blue with that and start blending it in. this part to be blended into white, so putting that in. Okay, and then I'm going to get the ultramarine blue and phthalo blue, but mainly the ultramarine. and put that all up in here. So you can see that with the second coat, it's still pretty, pretty ugly, but uh, it's, it's a lot better than before. The colors are more intense and you've got a little, a little of that green that we had covered up. So it's, it's getting it, it's got a little better. It's uh, very, very ugly. I mean, it's like, I, I think this is probably one of the ugliest, ugly stages I've ever seen. I mean, I, I really do think that it's one of the ugliest ones ever. I'm going to get some of that purple to blend. And this is going to be like clouds and stuff, but I don't want to do that quite yet. I want to get some other things back to the way I want it before I do that part. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to get the white and blend it up into that. rinse my brush out and I need more room on my palette so I'm going to spray it and take my scraper and get this paint off. That's the nice thing about the glass palette is that you can scrape off the paint and have more room work. I know I really really like this um, new palette that so before I've been using paper plates and they work really really good but this is even easier to clean because you know after I'm done painting I really don't feel like cleaning up. <laughs> it's like I I'm ready to go get a snack or something. So, I'm make sure that this paint isn't going to stay on my scraper blade. Okay. So, I'm going to get that same filbert that I was using just now and get the yellow and white 
and go right against that. So we're kind of doing everything over again, just um, we might use a little different color because I mean, it's kind of hard to remember what color you used the first time. So you're kind of just going over and mixing similar colors in. I'm going to take some of this orange and kind of make some little lines in it. And that'll make it look more like water. And I'm going to add some pink in here. And just put a little bit in there. So doing the brush strokes sideways will help it to look like water. Okay, and then I'm going to take my yellow and orange and put it in here. And then I'm going to get the purple and the burnt sienna, phthalo blue. I'm just making a dark color. And I'm going to put that up in here. Okay, and then I'm going to get more burnt sienna with it and drag down the reflections again. And then I'm going to get the yellow and the orange and white and put some of it over the reflection part and it will make it look like lines on top of the water and things so you can tell it's a reflection and not just some weird brown blob in here. And I'm going to put some of this dark up under here. And then I'm going to get the yellow and the white and the blue and make that teal green. Maybe a little bit more blue. the purple and the ultramarine blue and kind of blend up into the green. I'm going to get more blue and do that. I don't want it to get muddy. So I'm getting the phthalo blue now and the white and putting that pocket of blue in. And then I'm getting the purple.
this pink. I don't really have enough time to say anything, but when I'm painting, sometimes I, you know, I try to say some other things just to kind of make it more interesting because I know so it's like I kind of, I like, like it when I'm watching a video and they talk about other things. Just, I mean, it's interesting watching the painting, but just watching the painting, you know, for too long, it kind of, it's like, okay, I kind of want, you know, it just makes it more interesting, I think, when you have other things going on. I like it anyway. But this is kind of I'm jumping from one color to another so fast. So I'm just kind of trying to get the blend between the purple, blue, and orange good. And there's going to be some horizontal brush strokes. Even in, you know, there's going to be different colors in there, so I'm not trying to make it too perfect. I'm just trying to Trying to get the water look. Okay, and then I'm going to get this burnt sienna color and pull down into the wet paint for the trees that are in here. And then I'm going to get some light orange and pull some of that down because there's some lighter oranges in here too so we could like glaze over that later or something to brighten it up and then I'm gonna get a light yellowy orange go over the top make it look like the water so having the the strokes in both directions kind of gives it the water effect. And then we get some of this orange, put it into here with some of the pink colors. I think my dog's having a dream. She's or she's trying to get comfortable or something because she's making a bunch of noises over there, grunting. Okay, and then I'm just kind of blending these two in, and then what I'll do is take the purple and ultramarine blue and burnt sienna put it down here I'm getting some more ultramarine blue so it's got a little more of a blue color I'm just going to blend this right into those colors And then I'm getting the glazing medium for this part and kind of, you know, I'm going to take some of it and put some 
water ripples. <laughs> My dog is making a bunch of weird noises over there. She's trying to sleep or something. So there's, you want to put these dark in here because there's like dark ripples, so the ripples kind of have like a shadow color. So even in the lighter spots. I'm going to put that in there. And actually before this dries, I'm going to take some burnt sienna and there's like a pocket of burnt sienna color in here. Put it in real quick. And then I'm going to take the Purple and blues and so the purple, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna make a dark color, which is basically the color I'm using for most of my dark areas. And I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna have it really dark for this. So you can see the water starting to look more like water. The water, I think, is what really makes this a pretty painting. The different colors and it's just really, really pretty. I'm going to add some glazing medium and some water because it's not really wanting to flow very well. And just put those ripples back in there. And I'm trying to avoid, let's see, before I get into these orange spots, I'm going to rinse my brush out and make them brighter before I go over and make it to where I can't do that anymore. So I'm getting the yellow and the white with a little bit of pink. And a little more pink, a little more yellow. So it's like a pretty peach color. I'm going to put that right in here, right in those spots. You may even get some like really bright orange and pink together and put it in. Really bright. Okay, now let's my brush out. Grab the dark color, ultramarine blue, purple, and burnt sienna. And I'm just going over it a little bit. So that it looks like the water. Any of these areas that have like light color, you want to put some dark um, around and in it, like the green. We're going to have, it's a light color, but it's going to have some different colors in there, you know, to make it look like green, or to make it look like water. <laughs> it is green. I can't get my words right pretty much in any any video because I'm thinking of what I'm painting and what I'm trying to do and it's confusing. Okay, so I'm getting this dark. I don't know why I rinsed my brush out like that because I'm getting pretty much the same color. Um, so I'm getting 
uh, purple, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. It's mainly purple and blue, but actually I think I might get more of the burnt sienna. And maybe a little bit of yellow to mute it. Get like a dark brown. banks of rocks and you know wherever you want them to go here's some rocks that are kind of going out into the water not too far down And then I'm going to put some of this down in here. Okay. So now I'm going to rinse my brush out real good. Because we're going to need to do more on the sky for sure. Actually... Before I do that part, I may take a little bit of this color right here and get some glazing liquid and put some more of these dark stripes in here. It's a little bit of a different color than what we had. It's a little more purple. The other one was a little more blue. Put a few of those. And you want to just go back and forth and just every once in a while just lightly skim over the side of the brush. And then I'm going to get some yellow and white maybe a little bit of orange and up here is yellow ripples maybe because it's closer to the sun it's not as much shadow still wet and maybe get a little bit of darker color and put it in there and there are little bits of see I'm gonna get the glazing medium with what's in my brush now so it's not too dark put some of it over the yellow And then get some white and put it with it so that it's lighter. And I'm getting kind of an in-between purpley yellow to put right in between these two. Okay, so I think the water is pretty good, but we do want some little lighter. So I'm going to get a little bit of white with that color, put some of the ultramarine blue in it. We'll just see what happens here. I'm just going to put a little of these lighter ripples in the dark areas.
Okay, so now I'm going to take my brush and get the white again. Every time that I start the sky, I start with the white. Sorry, my cat was just uh, playing with my apron strings. I had to move it up on the table further. <laughs> okay, and then the yellow. This part is pretty easy to see what I'm doing. It's just the parts after that that are a little confusing. Okay, and then a little bit more. It's like I already need to clean my palette again. I haven't been having to clean it um, while I've been painting, um, except for this one. This one painting. I guess it's like I'm mixing so many colors, and then by the time I have to use it again, it's drying out, so. I kind of have to just redo it. So, actually, I think I'm going to do that so that I'll have a fresh start for for the uh, next step. Gonna spray that again because it's not really wanting to come off. At this point, I'm not trying to clean it like you know, super, super well, like I would if I was putting it up. I'm just tr trying to get it good enough that it will not have any colors that I'm going to mix with later. This rag is like super dirty right now. Okay, so I got some blue on my brush for some reason. Know how that got on there. Okay, so I'm going to take yellow and the white and a touch of blue. Get that green and then some burnt sienna. I do want it slightly green looking and put some of it down. Let's see. I don't want it to be I don't want it to go too far up, so I'm Need more white now. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to get this orangey green tinted color. Put 
that there, and then we get this orange. You can kind of lighten it up and put that up there. And it kind of just blends in with this. Kind of like a cloud that comes right there. And then it gets more green as we go up. And then it's got some more burnt sienna in there. Put that. this up in the, the cloud and this is where I'm going to start using my Deerfoot stippler. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to lay it down and then kind of stipple it to kind of make the edges fluffy. never went down far enough with this right here. It needs to be down to this cloud. And you can put some little wispy ones. And then I'm going to get some white and some orange and maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna. I got a little bit of the pink too. I want it more orangey and yellowy. Let's get this light color and put some of that. There, sh there my dog goes. Uh, Looking water really loud again. <laughs> she is like such a noisy drinker. Okay, and then so I'm just trying to get the right color and the right lightness here to so just put it in the spots I want it and kind of it so that it kind of blends it out a little bit. And then I'm going to take this dark color and put it in the opposite wherever I want it darker. any dark areas I'm putting in with this and just tapping up and down gently will kind of blend it out as long as they're both wet.
actually there's not really a whole lot of that color in that, that part. I just, it's actually much darker there. I'm gonna end up getting a little bit of the purple and the yellow. making it gold because of what was in my brush already. And get some of this color and kind of tap in some clouds coming. I'm going to get a little bit of the blue now. So I'm mixing up this green color again. Putting that in. And getting that dark, putting it up there. Okay, and sorry about that. That's my cat. She's scratching on a box. It's Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush out from that. Okay, and hmm. trying to figure out what color is up there. Let me get some glazing medium, burnt sienna. And some of this color up here. This might actually be the color right here. Let's see. Okay, and then I'm lightening the color. I'm going to add a little yellow to it. So you're getting closer to the sun. Okay, so I'm, I'm liking it now more. It's definitely better than it was, but it still needs a little bit something else.
And I've got the, um, this brush. <clears throat> I'm, I'm holding it still. I'm, just in case I need it, I'm, I've got it here with me. You get a little bit of the blue with it. Give it a little bit of a blue tint in there. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm getting close to where I'm going to need the um, transparent light anyway, so I'm going to open that up. So this is mixing white. You could use zinc white or you know any transparent light. And I'm going to just dip my brush in the water just a little. You want it dry pretty much, but I'm just gonna kind of try to get some of that yellow out by dipping it and tapping it on my rag. Real good. So I want as much of that water out as I can get out. I'm going to get some of that zinc white and put in some clouds back here in the blue. So that it looks like something else is going on back here instead of just plain blue. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to take this color here, actually maybe a little more of an orangey yellow, and just put in a few little dots. and. Tap them out so that they look like clouds or something. Get a little bit of white. Kind of lighten those up. And a little bit of this dark color in here. Sometimes I'll go side to side to kind of blend it, but other times, if it's a small area, I'll just tap it. Okay, and then I'm going to get some of this pink right here, and there's this pocket of peachy color right in here, and I'm going to get some purple and start blending that in. You could probably put a lot more detail in it and make it look even more real if you just sat down and took the time to do it. And just, you could probably do, you know, two or three more layers on the sky and just get it the way you want it. Um, but I think it looks good just with this many layers. Um, if you want it uh, more real, you can add more layers to it. So I got a little ultramarine blue with it now, so it's a little more of a blue purple. I'm gonna get some white and peach for this blending. And get some of this yellow. I know exactly what color it had, but it had yellow in it. You need more yellow now.
I'll get the orange and pink and just get a little bit of purple with it and try to kind of make this like a pink that goes in between these two. Then get the purple and go around it. And then some more of the ultramarine blue. And some pink and white. And orange with this. And I'm going to kind of soften that up. This is the yellow with white. And then I'm going to do ultramarine blue and purple right here. And I need more of the ultramarine blue now. I'm going to need more purple soon. See, I'm telling you, this painting, I keep running out of colors for some reason, and it, I don't run out, I don't normally run out of colors this fast. I guess it's because there's so many layers with this painting that I just didn't put out enough. So now I'm getting the pink, kind of. Add a little bit to it and then I'm going to get some white with this color. Make it a light lavender and put it up in here. Okay, and then I'm going to get some white and put it down here. And blend it. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush out. to get some lighter colors so I'm going to add some whites to these colors the bluish purple mixture put some of that in so it's not really really dark just add a little bit of light to it And then I'm going to add some white. I'm going to clean my stippler again by tapping it out, getting water and tapping it and getting it as dry as I can. If you had several little mop brushes or do fit stipplers, it would probably be better to Do that. And 
can see some light coming through. Okay. So, just get the white and just tap some dots in there and bring them out with this. And it's very, uh, it's very, it looks stippled, it really does. So, just kind of do a little bit in there too. I'm going to add a little pink to those ones down there. These ones are a little more faded. You bend it out. I'm just taking what's in my brush now to do more of that. Okay, and now I'm going to get a little bit right in here. And just see if I can make that color put in there. Put some purple down there. Okay. And maybe a little bit of yellow with that. Put that down here. I'm going to scribble it in. Okay. And now what I want to do is take white and go right up against here and blend that out. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to get the dark right up against it and then this light for down here. So then I'm going to come down in here and there's going to be like this line of light that comes in. And I'm going to take some of this dark and put it on over into here, some glazing liquid. Actually, probably a lot lighter than that. Just trying to get this the way I like it. Okay, and I'm gonna get some of this white and put it down in here. And 
blend it out. Okay, and I'm going to take some white, mix it with the yellow and the pink to make the peach color, and put some of it in here. Kind of scrub it in. I need more purple. So this is definitely going to be the longest video I've done on here. It's definitely very long. So if you uh, have painted this this long, then congratulations, because I have a really hard time with going long. You know, I can't paint for very long without getting tired and worn out and not ready for a snack. It's like, I don't know why, painting really makes me hungry, I don't know. Like every time I finish, I'm like, okay, I'm... I'm hungry now. I haven't painted for one and, or I haven't eaten in one and a half hours. So I don't know why. If it's like a you know brain thing. It's not. I just kind of that's what I think happens. So it does, or if it really is like that. But it's it's weird. I kind of sprayed right there. <laughs> okay. I'm scrubbing in some white and pink. In there. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the orange to it. And scrub in over here. And I'm going to get the yellow and pink with white. I'm just get a little bit and put that in here. Uh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to get the pink and yellow and try to make like some dark cloud coming over that light. Okay. Now to do more of this light cloud up here. So I'm just gonna tap it in a little bit. I'm rinsing my brush out from those pinks. But there are some pinks in this the clouds, so you just kinda of, you can kind of leave it with some pink if you want to. Okay, and there's some on here. Some right here. some really light right in here. Scrubbing that in. And I'm going to add some white right there. Okay, and I'm going to take the white, add it to this peach color, get a little more pink. A little more yellow. And put, let's see, it's a little more pink than that. I'm just going to put that right on top of those clouds and then stipple it out so it gives it like a uh, orange to orange to um, purple look and there's some more purple right in here so I'm going to tap that in. and kind of tapping in here and getting some white and tapping in here and do that transition and some more white right, right in here it's very light brush out I'm getting that light color again. It's a lot of pink and a little orange. And a little yellow. And we put that in here. It's yellower than that. Gotta be the perfect color right there. This part is really pretty to me. This orange on top of purple combination is really pretty.
it in the purple, putting it up here where there's a little bit. And on top of this cloud, a little bit on top of these, maybe just a little bit. And then get a little bit of white to go right under them. brush out. Get some more white. And just put a little bit right there. Okay. And a little bit of yellow with the white. some more white, put it up here. Oopsie. Yellow. Yellow actually looks kind of good in there though, so I'm going to leave it. And then I'm going to get the white and go back over that. Just to brighten it up. And then some white in here. Okay. And now I'm rinsing both of my brushes out. Take my filbert real quick and just put. It's gonna put more white there, but it's too dirty right now, so I'm gonna wait. Okay, so now for these rocks in here, I'm gonna take my round brush and get the purple. Both blues and burnt sienna. And put a little bit of that in there. Just kind of in there, wherever. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white to it. Now you can really see the tone of it. So I'm going to add some more of the burnt umber, some purple, some ultramarine blue, maybe some yellow, and some pink. I'm just kind of almost grabbing all the colors and just kind of making a gray. Okay, and then I'm going to put in some rocks in here. Just do different sizes and shapes and things.
else that scared me to death. <laughs> Sorry, then. My dog heard a knock or something on the wall. I always screeches like that when she barks. Drives me crazy whenever I'm painting, and then all of a sudden she jumps up and does that. It's like, oh my goodness. Sorry if I scared anybody. <laughs> Scared me. And then you can kind of tap the brush and kind of put it back here some in these spots where there's rocks. And then I'm going to start tapping little dots and start making them bigger. Until they're the size down here. Don't be afraid to go light. You can take some dark and go back over any areas that were too light or anything like that. So now I'm getting the dark color. I'm going to go under them and kind of darken up the underside. And if you don't do it smooth, that's okay. They can be as bumpy or as smooth as you want it to be. And then I'm going to take this light gray and add more white to it. And just add it to the side where the light is hitting it. I'm going to get some burnt sienna with it, but it's mainly burnt sienna now. And there are some rocks that are very red colored. You don't have to do specific ones in the picture, just kind of here and there at some red ones. And then I'm going to add some yellow. Do that color with some white and there's like a light yellowy color of rocks in here. And there's quite a few back here. There's not as many. There are some. Okay. When you like it, stop. You don't have to do any extra. Okay, and now I'm going to get the 
this dark color, put it right here on this island. I'm going to take some of the burnt sienna and orange and kind of make a lighter color on top. It's almost like some grass that's glowing because of the sun being right there. Okay, and I'm going to get that dark color and put it right here. Okay, so now I think I'll put in my uh, sun. So I'm going to get my 3 8 inch rose blender and I'm not wetting it, I want it stiff first I'm going to put some white right in here get it brighter I'm going to make sure this part's dry and I'm just going to take it and flick it out I might add some glazing medium to it. Just drag it out. Just mixing up the glazing medium and the mixing white. Mixing it with the mixing white. <laughs> and pulling it up. Making this shine. Okay, and then I'm going to get uh, just a little bit of yellow and add it to that to tint it. And I'm going to, out here, I don't want to touch the sun now, but I want to kind of add some yellow to it. So then I'm going to rinse this brush out that I've done that part. And I'm going to take my deer foot and put some, well actually I can't do that quite yet. First, I need to take my round brush, get this dark color, put in some tree branches. So, I'm going to water it down to put flow better. And just going to drag out. You could use a smaller brush, it would probably be a good idea, but you're not going to see a whole lot of this. I'm just putting some indication. And I'm watching.
down. So any parts that I later think that, you know, I don't want to see, I'll just cover it up real thick with the um, leaves. So you see, they really don't even look like trees, they're just lines. And then I'm going to take my yellow and orange, the light color. I'm going to take it and stipple it right back in here. There's some really bright leaves because the sun is going through them. There's some back here. Okay, and then I'm going to add some burnt sienna to it. Put them down below. Okay, and then I'm going to get some yellow-blue with it, and it's going to turn it green. And let's see, well, lighter green for the edge, because it's hitting this, the sun's hitting it. It almost looks like this may be full. I don't know, maybe not. It could just, I mean, I know that the orange is there because of the sun, but I guess it could also be the leaves are different colors. But I don't know. I can't really tell. It's kind of dark. Okay, then I'm going to get the darker green. that down here and get some more of the burnt sienna mixed in for this transition. And then make the green again. And I can see the um, branches are covered up, but you can still see through slightly. I can get this really dark color now and put it down, down to the island.
My neck is hurting. I, whenever I paint for a long time, my neck gets like to where my body's like telling me, okay, you need to stop now. No more. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty good, I think. So make the trees pretty tall. You want them to go really high. Okay. And then over here, we're going to have, we're going to take some burnt sienna and just stipple it in. Just for the first layer, just to kind of get it in there. Okay, and then I'm going to get some of this light green brown and put it in here. Okay, and I'm going to get this round brush. Get a little bit of that dark, kind of make a small indication of tree trunk. Just very, very small. Just the trunk and maybe a big leaf or something, or a, a big uh, branch, not leaf, a big leaf, that would be, that would be weird. <laughs> okay, and then right here, I'm just going to tap with the, um, the foot part, the end, make these really, really small trees back here, and then there's this one. So you get going to get the light color. And then there's this one that kind of is right in here. With a few others that are small. Okay. So then I want to take the same color and start doing the trees that are bigger. So they're going to be like up here. So they're like double the size. Put them all in here. We don't have much more to go, so just a little bit more. Okay, that's good, and then there's some bushes and things in here. Okay, I'm going to take this dark color and kind of put some more in here so you can't see where that island is. I'm going to take some of the green that we made and kind of put some of it over a little further. And I think that I'm going to take this dark color with the round brush and kind of put it down to here. And there's like really dark right up against this island where it stops. So I'm going to put that. And then maybe take this and kind of glaze over. Here. 
Okay. And actually, I'm going to take this color with some white, so a lighter color, and maybe some orange or yellow or something to make it brighter. And put in a few trunks in here. Just some little ones. Okay, and then I'm going to get the burnt sienna with this green. Start putting some green in there. Maybe I should probably take this dark color and start putting dark in here. Okay, and then some yellow with burnt sienna and white. Put some of those in there. And then take this dark color and put it back here. some of this green put in there and now I'll get some of this light burnt sienna color put in Getting some yellow and putting some. You should probably get some white with it. Putting some of it down here because you really like bushes or grass or something. Okay, and then the white, the yellow, and I'm going to get some the zinc white or the mixing white just to because I ran out of the other and it's it's going to be good for covering I mean, at this point it's going to be okay okay Take this brush we did the sun with and take some glazing medium. I'm, I know I'm going off, but I'm just going to get some glazing medium and orange and glaze over right here a little bit to make it orangey. Orange trees, so. Okay, and I'm going to take this brush and take some of this gray color and just see. Okay, I'm going to put some of this in the water. Okay, and get 
it's another really dark. Go up against that. There's like some stuff showing through there. Okay, now I'm just getting gray in there. I'm gonna get that out. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to look at it, make sure I like it. I do want to do one more thing. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, so just straight ultramarine blue, and put some of it up here to make it more blue instead of purple. And then add a little bit of white to it to brighten it up. Got some blue in there. And then do the same thing over here. Get some white. And brighten it up just a little bit. And then just kind of swirling it around. And I'll put some texture in there too. Alrighty, I think it's pretty good. So, I'm going to get my stippler and take the orange straight and go in here and do orange. You could glaze over it when it's dry, but I don't really have time to wait until it's dry, so I'm just going to put that in. Okay. And it's pretty good, I think. I might take some white and just get in there and since it is wet now. Just kind of tap in some light right in there. Okay, let me see. You can just get a little bit of pink in here. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I'm going to sign it with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen. And I got the white, and I'm just kind of, kind of tap it on my palette so I get the ink flowing. And go like a fingers width above so that um, when you frame it, it won't cover it up. It was actually kind of funny just a minute ago. Um, I was trying to get the other painting ready to show and I saw this white dot over here and so I started trying to rub it off and I realized that it was the dot in my name. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's not going to come off. <laughs> so, um, this is the schedule we have. We only have the horse silhouette left and it's kind of an ugly picture. The trees in it are kind of ugly, but I'm just going to change the trees and not make that weird looking one right there. So I'm going to change it up, uh, the trees, just a little bit to make it a little more appealing. And you could add color to it if you want to, so I'll tell you how you can do that. And um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I put out a new video every Friday. So 
um, I hope you enjoyed this one and if you paint it um, you can uh, post it in my Facebook group um, Powers Paint and Post and um, I would really love to see it so thanks for watching bye